Hey guys, how's it going? Hey guys, how's it going? Today I just want to talk a little bit about what it is that kind of gets me excited about the vlogs. And that really is the same thing that I strive for in everything I do, whether it's snake bites or educational shows or anything. And there's really three main topics that I'm going to cover today. First one, this right here. So I want to inspire people to think big, to do things that they haven't really thought they could achieve. And that's something that I've been striving for my whole life. You know, I always do things when people tell me I can't do them, but when I'm really passionate about something, nothing gets in the way of that goal. I want you guys to have that same mentality. If you really want to do something and the world is against you, don't let it stop you. If it's something good, hey, I don't want you to go out there and commit crimes, but if it's something that's good and positive for the world, I want you guys to be inspired to follow your dreams. Ever since I was a kid, people were telling me I couldn't work with snakes for a living, that somehow it was a crazy idea, and how could you possibly pay your bills with a snake. And the truth is, when I was younger, I didn't have the answer. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I knew I wanted to spend my life around animals with a special affinity towards snakes. So rather than giving up on the idea of working with animals, I looked for areas that I could find that I could work with animals. What could I do to spend my life around such amazing creatures. Again, I didn't know what was going on, and when I started out, there was no one that were breeding reptiles for a living, so it wasn't like I had a roadmap saying, okay, well, I'll just breed reptiles for a living. I had to find a way to do what I wanted to do with my life so that I could wake up in the morning and be happy each and every day. Was it the easiest choice in life for me to take down this path of breeding reptiles? No, as a matter of fact, I probably worked harder doing this because I loved it than almost anyone I knew. Rather than just getting a job and going to work and being happy to go home at night, I work seven days a week and I work my butt off day to night. But you know what? It doesn't matter because all these years of working with animals hasn't just been amazing to me. It hasn't been something that I thought, oh, I just work my life away. The life experience have been incredible. So I'm not telling you to quit your jobs and go chase some crazy wild dream. As a matter of fact, it's always baby steps, you know? First, you've gotta decide what you want to do with yourself. And then, you have to decide which way to go. So, it would be irresponsible for you to just say, all right, I want to go travel the world and travel vlog, and you don't even have a following and there's no way to make money. But if that is what you want to do and you want to say travel vlog, yeah, you, know, you start your vlog, you do short trips, you take vacation, eventually maybe you grow a following. Whatever the case might be, you've got to continue to stay inspired, and I want to help you with that. And that's what I live for, is to make sure that people are inspired by a story like me, just a normal average guy that isn't super smart, isn't super business savvy, just a guy that was really passionate and inspired enough to take a path in life that I have went on for the last three decades. Alright guys, so moving on to number two, the second reason why I do all the things I do is right here. I want to pique your curiosity. <laughs> Let me tell you, I am kind of a, one of those guys that is curious about everything. All the things around me make me curious. I'm super curious about animals, obviously. You can look around and see that. That's easy. But the truth is, I'm curious about almost anything. It doesn't matter what you look at. I mean, I look around and I think of, I mean, just weird things like, who the heck invented this? A squirt bottle. You know, and what... What were they thinking? I mean, it's amazing. We use squirt bottles every single day. We have tons of squirt bottles. But I think like, where did the idea come from? Why? And how amazing and how much, how many lives that changed or, you know, you can look around anywhere. I mean, look at the most simple thing in the world. Take a look at this. Have you ever thought about this? A broom. Who invented the broom? Why did they invent the broom? I mean, I'm sure one day someone was sitting around a hut somewhere and they had some dirt on the ground and they put a bunch of, you know, 
grass leaves together and sweeped it away. But the truth is, my point is, is curiosity is amazing. And if I can travel the world and go to these events and, and, and meet people and peak, not only people that I meet curiosity, but your curiosity, whatever it might be, you know, wake up in the morning and be curious about things. In particular, wildlife. The more curious I can make you guys about wildlife, the more research you're going to do about wildlife and the more you're going to really fall in love with it and then spread that love to other people and hopefully we can continue to save so many things out there. But again, I want to always peak curiosity. And speaking about curiosity, here in a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and feed my big snakes. And I'm sure a lot of you guys are really curious how you feed a big animal and what it's actually like. So I'm going to take you on that journey of feeding some of my really big pythons so that you can get not only the idea of what it looks like, but also you can get the feel of what it's like to be on my side of it. It's going to be awesome. So lastly, the last thing that I'm always thinking about is this right here. Listen, how many times have you heard that someone is terrified of snakes? Literally millions of times in my 30 years of working with reptiles have I heard someone say, oh my God, I'm terrified of that particular type of animal, the snake. Or for that matter, whatever it might be. Maybe it's alligators, maybe it's spiders. You may or may not know this, but the opposite of fear is knowledge. So we have to educate people about these amazing animals. The more we can teach them, the more people will be understanding of what these guys are really like and that they don't need to be feared. As you become familiar with beautiful animals like these alligators, uh, you all of a sudden realize that there's something not to be feared and that maybe you can start to fall in love with them. I don't expect you guys that are fearful of snakes just wake up one day and go, oh, look at how beautiful this snake is. What I do think is that we all have a responsibility to educate people about not just snakes, but about anything in life. The more we can educate people about wildlife or whatever you're passionate about, the better whatever you're passionate about will actually do. In my case, it's wildlife and especially snakes. So there it is guys, that's the three things that really get me excited about continuing to do not only this vlog but snake bites and all the other things I do. I tell you what, you cannot imagine how important it is to create curiosity, to inspire people and to educate them about the things that we're all passionate about. And now, let's go ahead and just have some fun and uh, for you guys that love rabbits, listen, this is gonna be frozen rabbits. They were no death involved. Well, eventually there was, but, but not here. Frozen thoughts. So for you guys that are kind of squeamish, you may wanna turn off now. If you guys are interested and curious about what it's like to feed big snakes, you're about to find out. Uh, this is always a little bit sketchy because you know a couple of these snakes are, are pretty large. Uh, and they come out pretty aggressively. So uh, I've got Trevor here to help me out uh, mm -hmm. to make sure because uh, you never really want to uh, take the chance of being alone with these guys. Uh, over time, I have fed many, many large snakes and they just accidentally sometimes bite um, you, not because they want to, but because they miss the rabbit. And if something like that happens, you always want a second person around just in case. So, you know, what do you want to do here, Trevor? You want me to uh, help you out? On Get this thing. There she goes. There she is. <laughs> she doesn't mess around, man. That is like, give me that food immediately. Let's uh, let's just open up Satan. There she is, right over there. This looks like the lucky rabbit to me. There she is. Sunshine is usually a really gentle eater, so we'll see what she does. I, sometimes you have to even just leave it in her cage and she just crawls up to it and eats it, but uh, we'll try, we'll give it a shot. Oh, look at that. That's unusual for her to be so aggressive. I'm gonna just leave it in there, see if he eats it. So again, sometimes, uh, they eat and sometimes they don't. Sometimes just leaving them in is the way to go because they'll come back and eat it later and they get a little bit stressed out. So we're going to do that. We'll go back and feed a couple of the other snakes that did eat uh, because, you know, second rabbit's probably going to be pretty good for them. 
All right, that's a success. Check the last one, it ate, so we're good to go there. Uh, that's awesome, that was a pretty successful day, I would say, so uh, that's it.